Hey guys, what's up? Excited to be here today, having a sit down with my man Tim Sykes, the man, the myth, the legend. We're gonna get into it, we're gonna talk some history, we're gonna talk trading, we're gonna talk charity. Uh, we're gonna talk what we've been up to lately. So we're gonna get into it right now. Taking things back. Um, you know, I remember you from being on the Wall Street Warrior show. And uh, it was right around that time where you and I had our first conversation, not sure if you remember, uh, but you called us at Noble, a, a, a firm that we had started uh, in 1999. And this was, I want to say, 2003, 2004. I may have my dates a little off. Yeah. Um, but uh, the guy tell me, hey, Dan, this guy, Tim Sykes. I'm like, oh, Tim, he's on the TV show. And I get on the phone. We're like, yeah, you know, you went into your whole pitch. I turned my bar mitzvah money into six or seven million dollars. This, this, this. I'm like, wow. So it was my first interaction with you. You did actually started trading with us back then. Yeah. Um, and in a small way, I don't think it was one of the, the, your, your major accounts, but um, you know, I've been watching and following uh, all this time. So we had the opportunity this February to reconnect, uh, Tim and I and his partner, Zach, uh, talking shop and, and all things meme stocks at the time. Uh, so uh, wanted to talk to you a little bit about the journey. Yeah. Uh, you know, you start off with the 12,000. Why don't you just take us way back and, you know, how you it's, got into trading and, and, and what those first trades look like. It's been a, a wild ride. Um, I think everyone should get into trading. Start with a small account at first because you don't necessarily know what you're doing. My parents gave me control of my bar mitzvah money. They thought I would lose it all right. in the stock market. They thought like, oh, teach the kid a lesson. But I got very obsessed with charts, turned the 12000 into nearly $2 million before I graduated college. Um, Probably shouldn't have started a hedge wow. fund right out of college. Not the smartest move, but I was very cocky. Um, was number one ranked short bias fund for three years, but I was only making a few hundred grand a year. I had a very small fund. Started to, or tried to go big, went for a home run, which I now teach not to try to do. Ended up losing a third of the fund, losing all my credibility. I was on Wall Street Warriors at the time. Yeah. Um, and Wall Street Warriors was a hit. All right, while you're listening to this interview, click the link below. I am so excited to finally work with a quality broker. We have so many exciting things coming up and we have some cool bonuses for you if you open a Trade Zero account. Click the link below, check it out. I was sulking because my fun, like losing, but it made me, you know, this more entertaining character. It was a hit, yeah. 2006, 2007. People are saying, hey, why don't you like start teaching? Like you, you turned a few thousand into a few million. Even if you lost some, like, I still had 70% of the money. And I was like, ah, I don't really want to leave the hedge fund world. But then the emails started piling up more and more. We became right. like the number one TV show on iTunes in the early days. You know, and obviously to your point, you know, the first season was, was good enough for them to call you yeah. back and want to do a second season. Yeah. So and whether it was the entertainment or the fact that you guys were, were doing something that was unique. I mean, a reality show about trading. I don't think it had ever been done before. So uh, that was awesome. And I'm sure great exposure and a springboard uh, for you guys onto the future. But I remember hearing that um, somewhere you're saying that you, you made your first million uh, trading stocks on the long side, but your second million on the short side. Yeah. What, what, what precipitated the switch or what made you think about yeah. short selling as a strategy? I mean, you always have to adapt as a trader. Uh, first year, I mean, I got started at right time, right place, 1998, 1999, yeah. 2000, max euphoria. Yeah. So I was just buying penny stock breakouts. I didn't know I was actually um, just riding the coattails of penny stock promoters and boiler rooms. We didn't know about that at the time. I was just like, why does this chart work every time? Why is it, <laughs> like I buy at 3.30, 3.45 in the afternoon, sell the next morning. I make 10 to 20%, like literally like 95% right. success because the boiler rooms were calling people at dinner, pitching them. People were putting their buy orders at the open the next day, creating the gap up. Right. I had no idea about it. I just saw the pattern. So I made my first million basically doing that. Year 2000 crash, no more boiler rooms. First four months of year 2000, I made like 700 grand. Last eight months, I'd lost 10 grand. There was no more wow. penny stock breakouts. So it forced me to adapt and I became a short seller. Wasn't as easy, but there were still pump and dumps and I could short the pump and dumps 2001, 2002, 2003, all the way up to 2006 when I was the number one short bias hedge fund manager. So markets go in and out of favor and you have to learn to go long and short. Right now, I haven't shorted anything in nearly two years because as a teacher, 
I don't think it's been a good strategy for newbies because right. a lot of these squeezes have been going crazy in the crazy bull market of 2020, 2021. Yeah. So I haven't shorted, but now as we enter 2022, we have a lot of overinflated assets. Maybe I'll go back yeah. into shorting. Some top heaviness. Trading sure. is adapting. Yeah. Exactly. Leave a comment below if you promise to adapt. <laughs> Seriously. Like so many people are like, oh, you can't go back and forth. Like, why? I'm not. This isn't yeah, a, right. Why do you have to be like, locked in? This isn't a political view where I'm like exactly. supporting one bill and then not supporting exactly. it. Like you're trading assets. You're trying to find a strategy that works for you. So that's what I've done. To make profit. I mean, really, who cares, right? If you can make money, whether you're going long or short, it doesn't matter. But you have to monitor risk. And well, shorting, I, shorting has been very dangerous. Because yes. when I first started shorting, okay, you get some squeezes from like 3 to 10, 3 to 15, 2 to 10. Now, now. you're seeing stocks <laughs> go from 2 to 50. Three to, to 100. 100. Yeah. Like, so yeah. newbies, be very careful with well, shorting. We always say, more. and that, that's a great point. Like, you know, I get asked all the time because of our, you know, focus on the short side and, and, and facilitating that. Who are the short sellers? And I'm saying, well, they're not people who are just starting off. I people say they're lepers. Just starting off. I say they're lepers. They live in caves. <laughs> <laughs> and they're, they're too afraid to go out of society because they'll get made fun of, but they're dark. It's like the people like... They're your contrarians, you know? And sometimes you may say what they're doing is un-American. But yeah. for, 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 for the most part, we've seen a lot of people learn about short selling because they're stuck in something that's long that drops precipitously and start scratching your head. Well, I wish I was in a stock that was long that would went up yeah. in the same speed as it went down. So I think people start getting used to the idea, having been in something that has that's worked against them. As long as a, an asset is volatile, you can go both ways and you can profit both ways. Like some people I talk with and they're like, oh, I tried short selling, I'm terrible. So I was like, just go long and then they do better. Right. Some people go long and they're like, oh, every stock I buy goes down. It's like, so get into short selling. Uh, right, right. You find what works for yeah. you. 